been pretty rainy this week, so we've been making good use of our time. And in this case, the long-awaited calendula balm. And we've been steeping these petals in almond oil now for some time. And it's turned a lovely shade of orange and we're ready to get cracking with it using wax pellets on the stove and turning it into really very nicely scented balm for the lips. Allotments for fun and food special. Well, back onto the plot. That really typifies the weather today. It's sort of a misty rain, but quite bright. Hence the rainbow. And it seems to be quite an extensive one. It was a lot stronger than that a minute ago. But I think you can still see the remnants. So, not too bad on the plot today. A bit of blue sky and a bit of misty rain. Okay, so this morning I've got some vegetables to pull and I'll be doing that probably off camera because you've seen that quite a few times. I wanted to sort of survey what I still needed to put compost onto and that is really this bed where there's still some solaria but I could get a half a bed full there and these two beds which I don't think I've done anything with at the moment oh I did cover that one I've still to cover that one and I've still got to do something with these two beds thinking cap on People often ask me how I get these leeks to be long and blanched like that and you can see that it's not particularly technical planting them fairly close together works well and I often get asked what variety they are and usually I grow mussel brown and each year I grow something a little bit different as well and I can't remember the name of the other leek that I grew I'd need to look back but for sure, it's not just about the variety. There are different shapes and sizes and varieties, but in my humble opinion, it's growing no dig that makes the difference. Growing into that replenished compost where the soil is not disturbed hugely makes a real difference. And that's a mighty fine crop for stews and various dishes for the rest of this week. And I'm gonna make some cheesy leeks so I pulled out a few extra leeks and if you want to see how I make cheesy leeks I'll link over there to a video that I made where I put together some cheesy leeks. And it occurred to me while I was harvesting this that this is where the growing season sort of collides because I'm harvesting the vegetables that I've put effort into all year and at the very same time I'm spreading compost ready for next year's and so the two parts of the growing seasons collide in the middle and this sort of vegetable the winter vegetable now hopefully will get us through to well late january early february and then we do get a bit of a gap where anybody who's making great use of their polytunnel unlike me will no doubt get dividends from their efforts in there but we'll have some purple sprouting broccoli ready, which will be nice. And it'll be full on then to grow for the following season. Good times. And this, of course, is getting the compost ready for that following season as well. And all this will make good compost.
Well, I think it's time to get some of this clutter into its new home and get a bit tidied up here. So I'm going to be selective. Something like this broken pallet I can put to one side. Probably isn't going to be that useful, but there are plenty of things here that I do use on a consistent basis. One of those, of course, is all my bigger pots. So I'm going to get all those together and put them into their new home. And then I've got a polystyrene container full of one of those low-level green sort of greenhouses and it doesn't work particularly well but I'm loath to throw away this big container I think that's gonna have to go in early so I can get things into it and then of course ultimately my net container which is really important and I need to get good access to so I'm gonna work my way through get things nearly in place and then slot them together let's go Well, I got on quite well. I'm quite pleased. I'll show you what I've done. I'll have a look around, see if it makes sense. I think there's a bit more to do, but a big chunk of it out of the way. Let's have a look. So this area with Mr. Robin underneath the pallet. Hello, my friend. So this area it's looking pretty good. It occurred to me once I'd put all those pots in that pallet crate that they need to be the other way up so they don't fill with water. And I need to keep my large pots down below the sight line just in case anybody unsavory walking along that lane thinks they might help themselves. The big container for the nets is nice and easily accessible. I had to put it on pallets in the end because the ground's so uneven and it's sort of got it straight. It doesn't have to be perfect. And then larger containers in the corner. And all those things I tend to use at some point throughout the season. So they all need to be fairly accessible. They've gone in quite well. And over here now, I'm afraid it's a bit like a quagmire. Very slippy indeed, but my potatoes still one side and I've cleared that space. I can have a bit of a clear up later. I've got a couple of strawberry baskets that I've left the strawberries in the soil to see whether they'll shoot back up in the spring. So that'll be interesting. They can sit there for now. And then over here, well, I can see the hedge again and there's bits of wood to sort out and I've still got a few bits and pieces down here, which I need to organize and find homes for. But I'm getting back to what it was before I moved compost areas. So that's gratifying. Right, I'm gonna show you what I'm gonna do with a job that I've been putting off. I get some great suggestions from subscribers and viewers and I'm always very grateful for them and always take them seriously. And some of them I use on the plot, some of them I use variations, and some of them I've never heard of. And this is one that sort of partial awareness. And one of the subscribers who I'm very grateful to suggested that I think about using tagities which is part of the marigold family. And marigolds have always been very powerful plants with lots of, well, perhaps not so well known properties. And this variety of tagetes, and I think they said it was minuet, has the ability to at least impact upon weeds and particularly cooch grass and bindweed. And so I went off and did a bit more research and sure enough, every provider of that variety indicated the properties that it has 
with regards to combating weeds. So I got onto Amazon and I pressed the button on about 300 seeds of this variety of Tegetes. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to plant them as a barrier at the beginning of these beds, this one and this one, and see if they can at least inhibit the encroaching cooch grass into the bed in both. Hopefully it'll have some impact. So it sort of spurred me on to have a go at this and that brings me on to another subject. Why you put something like this off continually and I have been doing that. And of course it's because it's too big a job in one go. So today I'm gonna do a bit of it. I'm gonna just break the surface up, remove these celeriac that are not gonna to come to anything because they're too small and take out some of the surface weed and then just leave it, come back and have another go at it another day. But in my mind's eye now, I'm preparing this for sowing some of those Tagetes flowers and putting them in as that barrier. So thank you very much for that suggestion. I love an experiment and hopefully it'll work and we can all make use of it. Right, stop talking. Get on with what I'm talking about. Well, definitely more to do, but I think I've broken the back of it, which is really encouraging. I'll have to go through this again and get the real deeper roots out and try and get it up to speed. But it wasn't as hard as I thought it was going to be. And I got a few surprises. Three of those celeriac with decent sized roots on. So they'll go in my hall for today. Well, that's pretty much it for today. I did just want to bring your attention to one of the channels that I've been watching. It's a monthly channel, which gives you a great sort of update month on month. And that's Izzy Wizzy. Well, I'll put the link in below or search for it in YouTube, but it's great, fantastic to see a plot month on month. I went right back and watched them from the start. Good times, well done Izzy. Well, that's it for today for me. I think I'm done and it's been fairly productive. The rain's starting to set in, but I'm pleased with what I've done. If you've enjoyed today's video, then click on the subscribe and the like. And if you want to get my updates every Wednesday, every Sunday, 8 p.m., click on the bell. Good times.